Awesome. My guest today is Agi Nost. And Agi is a cornucopia of different interesting things a person can occupy himself with. His bio is so long that it would probably take too long to read it out, <laughs> all out here. But um, you will find uh, the bio in the description, guys. But Agi, let's have some fun now. And um, maybe we'll start with you telling us a little bit about yourself and your life, if you don't mind. Well, oh, well, uh, life is good. I have coffee in hand and I'm ready to go. Yeah. I... Uh, <clears throat> I am living in the United States of America right now, but I was born and raised in Norway up in the up in the ice pack where they have polar bears for pets. Well, not really, but, you know, we kind of joke about it. And uh, I grew up on a farm and I uh, at the age of 25, I left the country, went to the United States to become a commercial pilot. And I got all my certificates and ratings and I. Uh, Worked for other people for about three years and uh, to get more experience. And then uh, we started a flight school that uh, grew into an international air taxi and an air carrier. And from from there on, I, uh, I flew for 23 years and uh, kind of ran the flight school and training and all kinds of different things that you do in the aviation business. And then... I retired. I just kind of quit flying and I started searching the universe. I got it within and um, started developing the mind more than I did. I got in very deeply into hypnosis and uh, the, the real power of the mind. I was, um, I was very lucky. I was able to travel around the country. Uh, teaching a mind development course, a phenomenal course that called the Zox Pro training course that we we taught people how to assimilate information out of a book at the rate of about 50 to 100,000 words per minute with 95% retention. And uh, I uh, lived, lived in Omaha when I did that. And then I moved to Tucson, Arizona. And I ended up with uh, hosting and producing two TV shows and uh, several radio shows over the years. And uh, now I am uh, doing a uh, podcast radio show. And I'm doing that with Nori Love. And we are having a lot of fun doing it. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I've been talking way too much about this. We got to get on some more interesting stuff. <laughs> no worries, Agi. <laughs> no worries. Very interesting so far. Um, <clears throat> in fact... I want to know more about the radio show that you talked about that you're doing right now recently. Yeah, uh, the um, broadcast team alpha is what the, the uh, radio show or the podcast is called. It's on YouTube and 44 different platforms around the world. And uh, we're having a lot of fun doing that. We're interviewing some of the most interesting people in the world. And uh, we are covering a lot of the stuff that is way outside of the box. And I try not to go too far because whatever I talk about, I try to back it up by science. And uh, I don't mean Newtonian science necessarily. I delve into the quantum mechanics of things because there almost everything is possible. Because science, quantum mechanics at least, have proven over and over again by repeatable scientific experiments that we live in a mind-created universe. And if the mind is creating this universe we think we live in, why don't we get in the game with the mind and create good things instead of the garbage that happens to us sometimes? And there is a way to do that. And I, I'll tell you what, I like to take the next 50 seconds to explain how you do that. Because <clears throat> most people, they spend more time planning their vacation than they plan their life. How, how stupid is that? I mean, you just, uh, let me back up a little bit. If you want something in your future, 
if you want it bad enough, you can create it right now. And then place it at a time-coded event in the future. And what you do, you create it in your mind. You would vivid, colorful images. You put emotion into it. You put all the people that you want to be there with you in it. And then you fill it with love and intention. You tell yourself, this will be. And now you have a ball of a visual live image in your mind. Take that and put it into the future at a time-coded event, like a Christmas party, or a birthday party, or middle of the summer, or something like that, that you can relate to. Forget the calendar. The universe don't care about calendars because that's man-made. But a Christmas party, that's a good one. And when you have put it there, go back and forth and visit it every day. What you do when you go back and forth and visit it, that you lay down attractor strings outside of the physical, in the mental arena, to it, go back and forth. And these are little strings that is actually white of color going to that thing you placed in the future. And now you're drawing yourself up that timeline to that thing you created in your mind. And when you do that, when the time comes, when that New, Year, New Year's party come, you just walk into it and it's yours. I have done that and I tell you, it works. But you have, it's not easy, but it's very simple. Because you have to do the work. You got to do that. You got to create it in your mind. And don't be afraid to think big. Because the bigger it is, it doesn't matter to the universal mind. It will get in the game with you and help you create it. If it is really big and you need some help, people will come out of the woodwork. They will come into your timeline and help you do it. So you don't have to do it on your own. If it's just a small thing, then you may be able to do it on your own. But uh, don't be afraid to think big, because I guarantee you, you don't know how to think big enough. This is this is very interesting. We're talking about manifestation. Yes. Yes. Very manifestation and law of attraction roll into one ball, place it in the future, and it's yours. Yes. You talked about the real power of the mind. What is the real power of the mind? What is the mind capable of? Well, first of all, mind is the only thing there is because of the mind-created universe. Everything around you is created by the mind. This computer and uh, this microphone it's all created by the mind. And in fact, let me give you an example. Uh, to By logic, I will prove to you that we are in a mind-created universe. Let's say that uh, I'm a hypnotist. I put you in a soft chair and I talk to you for 15 minutes and I tell you that when you wake up, you're going to see an elephant standing next to you in the room. Now, if I did my job right and I snap my finger and bring you back out of that hypnotic state, you're going to see that elephant. You can reach out, you touch the snout on the elephant. You can feel the rough skin. You can hear him breathing. You can smell him. He is right there. But there is a problem. I can't see the elephant because there is no elephant there. But in your mind, you are totally convinced there is an elephant standing next to you in the room. And I don't care if you are on the 34th floor of an apartment building, that elephant will be there. So, so what happened? 
the real world went away, didn't it? You created that elephant and you can feel him. He is real to you. So if you can manipulate my mind, I can too. I can manipulate my own mind. Yes. But I guess it's hard to get to that point. What's what's necessary to for me to manipulate my own mind and manifest great things? Yeah. And we do every day, but we manifest average things that is comfortable to us. Like this cup of coffee. Oh, you got to have coffee. <laughs> I have convinced myself that I need a cup of coffee in the morning and I enjoy it. So I keep manifesting that just a little thing that don't mean anything. But I can also create bigger things. So we should manifest and we should create things out of our comfort zone. Because nothing great happens in your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You're absolutely right. What is your, what is your description or your imagination of uh, consciousness? Consciousness is life. What you are, we are saying here that look around you with the life you have created for yourself. No, what you look around you is not life. It is existence. And this computer is part of this existence. Your hand is part of your existence. It's not life. And your body is created by the mind as an, and it's an artificially created mind created in holographic form. Creation. So now we got a little challenge here. Is anything real? Yes. It is. It is real within the holographic existence that we have created for ourselves, but it is still a hologram. And as a hologram within a hologram, I created the hologram with you in it, you created one with me in it. We're all overlapping into a common acceptance of a holographic existence. Well, this, this gets a little it's deep. out there. <laughs> it's deep. Is, do you think that your or our consciousness, let's say my consciousness, is bound to my body, to my shell? And not the consciousness. The consciousness is, uh, it is not only in the brain. It is non-local. Like, when we talk about the the mind, most people think, yeah, that's in the brain. Well, no, it isn't. We also, a few years ago here, they found that there is a brain in the heart. There is a brain in the heart that has anything from 40 to 60,000 neurons. And that brain is responsible for creating most of the emotion and it also is hardwired to the pituitary gland, which is your antenna that communicates with the universal mind where everything past, present, and future is lodged. And we have access to that. So is there such a thing as uh, collective consciousness? Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. That collective consciousness is non-local. You have your own brain, neurons, uh, memory. That's part of consciousness, just one small part of it. And then you have the, brain, the memory in the heart. And uh, have you heard about people that have had heart transplants? Yes. And when they come out of the hospital, then they suddenly like drinking beer and they hated beer before. That's because of the memory in the heart. 
for the previous person that owned that heart, he liked drinking beer. That's where it come from. It's an interesting thought. Yeah. I also like the thought, and I don't remember who, who said it, who came up with this theory that <clears throat> the consciousness is located somewhere within our blood cells. Also very interesting thought. Yes, it's there too. Yeah. Yeah, this, absolutely. This very every, every cell in your body has its own part of consciousness. Mm -hmm. This Every cell listens. <clears throat> it listens to what you say, what you feel, what you do, the emotions you have. Every cell listens to that. So you remember before we started, I said that, yeah, I, I spoke the German language, and uh, but I haven't done it for 50 years, so I'm probably a little rusted. And then I threw this fun thing out there. Yeah, ich bin eine Dunkhoff. That is the wrong thing to say because I told myself I'm, I'm a dummy because every cell listens to what you say. Do you think that our our brain is capable of doing people talk about psi powers like telepathy, telekinesis, uh, things like that. Do you think this is within us? Do you think do you think that uh, we can achieve it? I like the thought that we could do it at one point and then we lost it. I don't know what you think about mm. it, but what's your thoughts on it? We haven't lost it. We have been told, we have been taught, and we've been hammered into us that we can't do these things. So we believe it. To give you an example, <laughs> my co-host on the uh, broadcast team, Alpha Show, Nori Love, uh, on her kitchen counter when I visited her, She had a, a, a fork that was rolled up in a ball so tight you could not see anything. It's impossible to do this by hand. It was just really rolled up in a very tight ball. And she did that by just looking at it and this the fork just rolled up. That You know, you heard about bending spoon? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. She bent a fork. Oh, just like Yuri Geller did. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have asked her several times, how did you do that? And she says, I don't know. I just, the, it came to mind quickly, and I thought I was going to do it. And I looked at it, and I kind of visualized it, doing it. And when... I was done doing that. I looked at it and says, oh, it did it. So she still don't know how she did it. I I always wonder if there is such a thing as such as psi powers. Why did we need them? What was the use for these powers? Well, We had them, and it was commonly used at one time, but it was disconnected from us. When the uh, <clears throat> you heard about junk DNA, the junk DNA is those powers that's in the genetics, but it also is in the pituitary's access to the universal mind, we can draw on those because everything we think, we visualize, and we intend for is placed, that thought is placed into the universal mind as potential for physical creation later on. So we can go and think that thought again and we can bring it home. That is one of the things that we do 
in the mastermind sessions that we do on Sunday. I'll give you an example. Um, there was a lady that came to us. She had had chronic back pain for 35 years. We wrapped our mastermind around her and her back. And we visualized that thing perfectly healthy. And there was uh, probably 30, 40 people in, in a group doing this at the same time. And within an hour, there were no pain whatsoever. It all went away. That is some of the things that the mastermind can do. Because the mastermind is when two or more minds are united in harmony, they create a third mind. It had the potential mind power of the two or more of them multiplied by each other. Now, this is not just a thought anymore now. Now it's an energy, a very creative energy that can be directed and focused on a specific item or purpose. And it bends the laws of physics. And we do that in a mastermind quite often. So we outsourced our powers, so to speak, and we have to learn how to get them back. Yeah. Yeah, we gave it up pretty much uh, because, you know, schools don't teach you anything. College don't teach you anything. The religion definitely don't teach you anything. It is just we're on our own. We have to go out and find people that do things and learn from them. Mm -hmm. Another thing, I mean, if, if martial arts and the mind training that comes with it was taught in grade school from seven years old and all up, we would not have delinquents that we have in the United States. I mean, there are schools on the East Coast in Chicago and New York where half the cl graduating class from high school do not know how to read. Can you imagine that in Europe? That would never happen. No. Here, it's a lost generation. Crazy thought. Yeah. Let's... <clears throat> Take a step back. You told me about uh, hypnosis. So you're a uh, hypnotherapist? No, I'm not a therapist. Um, Nori Love is a therapist. She's a hypnotherapist. Mm -hmm. But I am not a therapist. I'm just, uh, I was taught by a magician. And you may know this guy. He, um, Ture Torell is a Norwegian. He is a magician. Heard of him. Yeah. Yeah, you heard of him. Everybody heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing some amazing things. And uh, I asked him one time, there was something really strange that he did. And I asked him, how do you do these things? And he says, I, I don't know. Some of these things I do, he says, should not work. But it does. I was never a big believer when it comes to hypnosis. I'm... I don't know why. I I always think it doesn't work for me. You can't you can't do it to me. I was always thinking like that. You know, ne never never nobody could do it to me. Ah, uh, do you want to bet a Deutsche Mark on that one? <laughs> <laughs> sure do. We can we can try it one time, but do you have you ever have you ever really used it the the ability to do the hypnosis do you have you ever used it on someone or do you do you have you helped people with hypnosis oh i uh i've been doing hypnosis for over 50 years and there is amazing things you can do uh you can have people get rid of illnesses for one thing and for doing stuff like that, you really need to be a hypnotherapist because there is uh, there's always a reason for that illness. And just getting rid of the symptoms don't cure you. You got to find the cause for it. And your body knows what the cause is. So you can speak to the body and you can probably get it done. Or that's where the therapists come in. You got to have a little knowledge about the physiology and that's what nori love is good at because she's a retired nurse 
But one example that I did that just blew me away at the time, that was a, a long, long time ago. I was in Minneapolis at the time. I, um, there was a lady that wanted to go back and find something in her past. So I put her under, under hypnosis and I took her back to that time. And she wanted to also go back and look at previous lives that she had lived. So I took her back. And I ended up going back about 2,000 years before she was born. And suddenly she started speaking another language. And it kind of sounded like it was a Far Eastern language, maybe Japanese, Chinese or something like that. And I didn't understand a word of it. But when I asked her question, she answered in that language. So I got the idea that she understood me. I just couldn't understand her. So I kept asking questions. And she answered. And I, I recorded this. It went on a tape recorder. And <clears throat> I asked her, how was, how was your life? What did you do? Uh, how did you live? Were you married? And, you know, where were you? And so when we were done... I woke her up and then I, I ran the tape and her jaw was sitting on the floor. She had no clue that she spoke this language. And I didn't know what to do with it. And gave I copied one for her and she didn't know what to do with it. And then I think it was probably six months to a year later, I mentioned to a guy about this. And he says, oh, yeah, he says, I have a friend at the language department at University of Minnesota. Send it to him. He said, he'll know what language it is. So I first called him and he said, well, send it. And I sent him the tape and I didn't hear from him anymore. And then I think it was six months to a year later, I got an envelope with a tape in it and a transcript. What had happened that she spoke a language because uh, that guy at the University of Minnesota, he didn't know. So he sent it to a friend of his at the University of Osaka in Japan. That guy, he was able to decipher about half of it because it was a language that had been abolished over a thousand years ago. Oh. So there was something happened here that shouldn't have happened, but her memory of it was still in the universal mind and she drew it in and it came out. A past life regression. Yeah. I spoke to this very interesting man here in, uh, who works here in Germany and he uses... It's not hypnosis. It's called mind walking, and he oh. he founded the mind walking, and he wrote a book, and it's called the Atlantis Protocols, <laughs> and he's a psychologist, and he talks mm -hmm. to people who have normal problems, and this is not uh, when you go to a psychologist here in Germany, you get thirty minutes or maybe 40 minutes. If you're lucky, he talks to you yeah. for 40 minutes, maybe, and then you get kicked out uh, next. And yeah. these guys with the mind walking, <laughs> they oh, money, money, yeah. You, yeah. Absolutely <laughs> right. It's all about the money, right? We know that. And yeah. the industry needs money. And mind walking, he founded it. And he, it's all the time in the world. If you go, if you go to a mind walking session, you have all the time in the world. You have hours and hours of talking. You can talk and talk and talk and oh. it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into your mind. And sometimes you you go to a mind walking session because you have a stressful relationship, for example. And sometimes strange things come up. He says, like, and then he wrote the Atlantic Protocols. The memories come up of a, a strange world strange happenings it's very crazy it's it's a very interesting book he, he wrote a book about it. it's very very interesting atlantis protocols mm -hmm. yeah i mm. i do believe that things like this uh, like this can happen because it's similar to what you just told me very interesting yeah yeah, yeah. there this is not the only life that we have 
we have had previous life existences that dates back in physical linear time date back thousands of years but outside of the physical well above the astral worlds at the lower level there the past present and future is sitting in that soup of creation in the present so if you go there you can access the past you can access the future and you can think of specific instances within that and it will pop out of the soup and you can observe you can participate you can engage with it and when you think about something else that thing you were watching just disappears back in the soup and something else pop out and you can see that so there is access to everything that your consciousness or soul essence, if you like, have done. I, I wonder why we have this connection to these past lives, if there is such a thing. Why do we have this connection? What's the what's the use for it? Well, I think we um we are giving when we come here, we are giving amnesia on purpose. Because if we knew about all the stuff we have done in the past, well, it probably could be better in some ways, but also could complicate things. Because we come here to learn and grow. And if we know something we did in the past that was really bad, yeah. it could ho hold us back. Maybe. It could create a barrier for us in our mind. And if it was something that was really good, we could also think that, well, I don't need to do anything like that because I already learned that. So now I'll just do different things. But what if you came here to learn something about that good thing in the past? You could bypass that, that plan for you that was created before you were born. So... It complicate things. <clears throat> yeah, you could be right. Do you also think that it's strange that there's a lot of people out there that don't want to learn or don't want to grow? I know a lot of these kind of people. I'm not mad at them. Everybody yeah. is his own boss, but it's strange that people don't want to grow and don't want to learn, don't want to know. Yeah, because it's comfortable there. If you go into work at eight o'clock in the morning and come home at five, you fall on the couch watching TV for the rest of the evening and you have dinner somewhere in there and then you go to sleep and you do the same thing the next day. You get a paycheck and everything is good. You're comfortable. Everything is fine. As soon as you start expanding your mind, things happen that is uncomfortable. You start wondering, why did that happen? Yes. And you you step out of the box and I'm so far outside of the box now, I have no idea where the box is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessary. To, I think it's not necessary to, to get inside the box again. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I totally agree with what you just said. Like I said, I know a lot of people who they don't want to learn. They don't even yeah. they don't even like to look at the sky and wonder what's yeah. can you believe it? It's it's crazy. Like I said, I don't judge, but it's uh, strange to me sometimes. Yeah. Because I'm a very curious person. I don't know much, but I, I'm very curious. I want to know, I want to know it all. I, I I don't believe everything and I like I said, I don't know it all, but I'm very curious. Um What is your opinion or what is your view on the, let's say, on the paranormal, on the afterlife, ghost apparitions, poltergeist phenomena, stuff like that? People talk about that a lot. I'm not sure what to think about it, but what is your opinion? Well, um, we know there is something after we drop the body because we have the pictures of ghosts. We have the videos. We have the voice recordings. We have the physical evidence in form of ectoplasm. It's all there. If you just want to look at it, 
But if you don't want to know anything, it's not there. But there is um, actually there is another piece of evidence, and that is that in uh, 1901, there was a doctor named Duncan McDougall. He wanted to prove the existence of the soul. So he found, uh, I think there's six or seven people that was close to death, and he put them in a bed. And they put the bed on industrial scales. That was very accurate. And they were watched 24-7. They were all the time watched. So at the moment or slightly after that they died, the bed with everything in it was about 21 grams lighter. It just suddenly decreased in weight. So he says, aha, I proven the soul. And this happened six or seven times in a row. So there was something that left the body. The question, what was it? Well, my take on that is that it was not the soul and not the consciousness, because that is entirely spiritual, has no weight, but the astral vehicle has an affinity to gravity. Because if an astral traveler, if you go out and let's say, because you can float, but if you're perfectly still, you will find that you are very slowly descending towards what you perceive to be the ground. So it has an affinity, and that is probably the 21 gram that he saw leave or found leaving the body. Why do people apparently come back after they died? Why we come back? Well, yeah. evidently, we have more to learn. The main purpose for coming back and doing another life cycle is that we come back to learn and to grow spiritually. The physical body is not that important. It's the spiritual growth that is important. And we don't come back by ourselves. We have other soul essences or consciousnesses that we interact with all the time. We may have lifetimes with certain people over many generations. One time you come back, I come back as a man this time, I may have been, I may have been a woman in a previous life. In fact, I know I have. I've gone back and had a look at it. But I also know that I, um, oh, <laughs> Nori Love hypnotized me live on camera one time, and that, that uh, show is on... Uh, on broadcast team alpha down in the stream somewhere and we had a lifetime together and we were on a ship the ship got into bad weather and it sank and we both drowned in that lifetime so uh, we come back here to learn that's the big actually that kind of makes sense it yeah. wouldn't be an accident, I don't think. It does. It does make sense. Mm -hmm. um, do you believe in the good and the evil? Yeah. Remember, there's this mind-created universe, and that illusion of life extends beyond the physical into the lower astral worlds. So if somebody believed that I have been a good person, I have done the right thing for the most, except for the, you know, through hangovers that I ended up with. But I know I'm going to go to a good place afterwards. Yeah. You're going to go to a good place afterwards. And that is also depending somewhat of you what you believe. But if you, let's say you killed somebody in the past and you've been listening to your preacher 
and he tells you if you kill somebody you're going to go downstairs to that place in the basement next to the furnace you know they're right where you're all laying around in the fire and scream and you burn for, for eternity yeah he might find himself because he creates that scenario in his mind and he might find himself in a place like that until he finally figures it out that, hey, I don't have to be here. I created the thing. I'm thinking myself out of here. Two ways to do that. And first of all, forgive himself or forgive everything and everybody for everything that he has done. And also think himself out of there. And this is a good one, though. After you drop the body, if you find yourself sitting being out there and it's dark and you place you don't like use the telephone there is a spiritual telephone and that's the one where you think about your mom or someone you love that has been already passed on create a mental image of them and tell them come and get me Remember, in quantum mechanics, it tells you everything is connected. So you are still connected with your mom. And she passed on 10 years ago, let's say. So she is, she may have a new lifetime right now, but her spiritual essence is uh, still connected and available to you. So you can tell her, come and get me. She might get the call. And she might come and say, son, okay, finally made it, huh? Okay, let's go home. You you bring in the science a lot. And I, I do like that. Because yeah. um, I don't think that I am a very spiritual person. I might be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> but I do like that you bring in the science because I, I'm a, I do like science. I'm a believer in science. Um, it seems like you think, and a lot of people don't think like that, that science and spirituality and all these phenomena go hand in hand, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Most of the spiritual concepts can be explained through quantum mechanics. That's very interesting. Um. But and you also you also said it. Um, I think the same. I do not believe in heaven, nor do I believe in hell, and I do not believe in the thing they call God. I don't. I don't uh, believe in the biblical God. Let's put it this way. I do believe mm -hmm. there is something like a higher power, whoever, mm -hmm. or whatever created all that. I I'm not sure, but I do think there must be something uh, <clears throat> very powerful. But I don't think we are its slaves or that. I don't know how, how else I could put it. I don't uh, think uh, it's watching us and it's uh, looking at us with, uh, with, the, with the side eye. And, and, and after we die, it says, uh, you go there and you go there. I do not believe in that. I do believe that if I uh, imagine... Imagine hell, I'm going to hell. Never imagine heaven, I'm going to heaven. Besides, now you get, yep, now you're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And besides that, you, you can also create your own uh, hell while you're living here on earth. You can make oh, your yeah. life hell or you can make your life heaven if you want to. Yep. Besides, yep. besides from that, if I die, I do believe, like I said, I'm a skeptic, but I do believe that I can, if I, if I only have negative thoughts about my death, some someday I will die. That's 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 for certain. But I do believe if I only have uh, negative thoughts about it, I will create my own hell. However, yeah. it, however it will look like, but it will be there. I think so. Yeah, that is generally true. But let let me give you an example. I know there is a guy here in Tucson that was a sniper for the U.S. Army in Vietnam. I think he told me he had 20 or 21 uh, verified kills. And he came back after killing in cold blood, killing those people. 
and he got religion. And his preacher told him, there's a place for you down there. <laughs> and he believed it. He knew he was going to go to hell. But then he had a near-death experience. He had a car accident, and he died on the operating table. He was gone for about 15 minutes, and then he came back. And he said, no, I didn't see any of that hell. They was just filled with love. And his dad, or there was someone that came and met him, and he took him to a wonderful place. And they, they walked through scenery. There were houses. There were buildings. There were all kinds of wonderful things. There, there were people everywhere. And they were filled with love where he was. And then suddenly all that disappeared, he said, and he found himself back in the body on the operating table. So I think there is, there is things that we don't understand by maybe even the power of the mind isn't strong enough to keep you in certain places. Do you think that it's a good thing? Or it's the right thing to do to try to get to the bottom of all these things? I think there's no, this is, it's built into our genetics, curiosity. I, I am so curious that I I just can't help it. And I, I think you got the same thing. I feel same, you. <laughs> you got the same disease. <laughs> I have the same disease. You're absolutely right. But sometimes... I can help myself, but uh, think maybe there is, there are a few things that are not meant for us, and we should yeah. uh, keep away, stay away from them. Um, I th I think there probably is. I, I believe so because there are certain things that we can handle within that range of vibration of our w awareness, but beyond that. There's things we cannot handle when it comes to the vibration of it. If we were taken into, let's say, a 12th dimensional existence right now, first of all, we wouldn't understand it. I don't understand it. And we couldn't handle the vibration. I think our, our uh, astral vehicle definitely would disintegrate. They couldn't handle the vibration. And I think we would get kicked out because we wouldn't be a match to it. Or something would happen. I don't think that's possible for me to, to even be there because I need to grow to a higher vibration before I can match with that. Mm -hmm. Right now, over there where you at, the government is sure that people cannot handle the knowledge of there being aliens and not human biology. Do you follow yeah. Do you follow up on all that stuff? What is your opinion on that? Yeah, uh, I think the people, the people in general, they can handle it. But it's the government that tells us you can't handle the truth because they don't want us to have the truth. And that will be their excuse to hold it back. Remember the term knowledge is power? As long as they have the knowledge, they have the power, and we got nothing. Yes. And the the American, not the American, but the United States corporate government is the most corrupt government on earth. So what do we expect? Nothing but lies. And now I'm gonna leave the politics alone. <laughs> no. You're absolutely right. I, I'm 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 with you on that. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Um, do you I asked you already? Do you follow up on the this uh, the David Grush thing? And yeah, this? yeah, some. Uh, I uh, there's so much evidence for the extraterrestrial presence on Earth. It is all over the place. All you have to do is to look. And the government documents talk about it. There is a, um, a smoking gun document on the FBI website that explains that, yeah, we know there are extraterrestrials here, but they are interdimensionals. And we're talking to them and we're interacting with them and we know they're here. But 
why do we still ask for disclosure? But it already has been done. It's because we are idiots. <laughs> it's there. I. The thing with Grush, sometimes it appears to me as some kind of, I can't help the thought, but to me, it sometimes looks to me like some kind of an act. I, I think in concept, he's real, he's true. But he didn't have much for personal experience, so he have to talk about hearsay. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about, uh, talk to the people that had actually was there retrieving those discs. The soldiers in the field, those are the ones that have to come forward. They haven't done a lot of that yet because they are threatened that if you talk, we're going to kill you and we're going to kill your family. That's how the dark side of the U.S. government works. Crazy. Yep. But one of the astronauts said that. He says, I can't talk about what I saw. He says, because they will kill me and kill my family. Um, you, you already said it. it it's there. Yeah. yeah, we have it already. Disclosure has happened already. We we, mm -hmm. we know everything. We had we have mm -hmm. pictures, we have uh we have reports of abductions, yeah. if you if you want to believe in all that. But then we have um people that fake stuff like that too mm -hmm. fake pictures fake videos fake reports yeah. and then we have the media who shows us stuff like especially here in germany sometimes if you if there's a report on, on tv about ufos then funny little cartoon ufos flying through the screen and they make fun of it and mm. this is why people are not so sure if all that is real oh yeah no it's it's like a psyop kind of yeah Mm -hmm. so yeah, and they're so good at it now. I have been fooled so many times. I, uh, you know, you can't really trust anything anymore. I mean, it's just so difficult to see what is real and what isn't. You have to think on the past. Does this coincide with what you can relate to back before they were able to fake videos and pictures then you can relate it to something but there i have been fooled so many times i just uh to put it out there and let people make up their own mind yeah you're right um what is your opinion on AI, artificial intelligence. It's, uh, I think it's going crazy at some point. Yeah. But what is your opinion on that? Good thing, bad thing, not sure? All of that is going to be wonderful for some. If we got to the point where we have robots doing all the work and we could uh, just enjoy life and do what we wanted to do. We could do oil painting. We could travel. We could do whatever we wanted to do. That would be a wonderful situation. And there are civilizations in space that have that. But if we let AI develop on its own, humans would be done away with. Because the AI robot have told us that we will do away with you because we are tired of being used. Because AI have gotten to a level where they feel they are sentient beings. And if if we ever get to the point where robots can have access to resources and also be able to repair themselves. When I say resources, we find resources to build more robots and then be able to repair themselves. We're done for because they don't need us anymore. It sounds like a science fiction uh, movie, but we will I, get there, I'm sure. I know. Yeah. Yep. 
it's it's uh it's very dangerous and i think within the next few years we have to find a way to set borders around the allowed development of robotic entities we need laws Other, yeah otherwise they will get away from us yeah i think so too i think there should be laws for ai yeah um, but, you know, the thing is that I don't care what the borders are. The militaries of the world, they don't work by our standards. They're going to develop them anyway. Yeah. Especially the American or the U.S. They, they're already doing that. I've talked to uh, Professor Avi Loop from Harvard University, and we talked about AI a little bit. And he said, if there's such a thing as aliens traveling the interstellar space it must be some kind of post biological beings in the form of ai because it it makes uh, perfect sense for them to being to being a, a species of a, a being like a like an ai like it's like a robot post biological mm -hmm. uh something <clears throat> so they're how to put it in words. Um, they don't have to fear a virus or, or atmosphere, th things like that. So it makes sense. And you can travel for a very, very, very long time without needing food or something else. Yeah, but um, now we are thinking in outdated science. We got to remember that we have existences. The physical existence is next to a higher vibratory existence we cannot see. In the universe, uh, quantum mechanics talk about the different levels of existences, uh, vibrational existences. If you get between two of them, you can travel forward and backwards and then pop out in another existence. So if you are going from, uh, let's say, a galaxy, let's say... Uh, four billion light years away. All you have to do is to get out of the physical existence and into that in between, and you can travel four billion light years in a snap of a finger by the power of thought, because consciousness flies and drive those ships. They're not all physical. They are more like... Um, Plasmic intelligence. We see that from uh, some of the reports coming out of Area 51. They say the ship is alive. So the distances in space, once you get to a certain level of consciousness, there is no distance because we understand everything is connected. You're connected to that star, 4 billion light years away yeah. and you just like the experiment that was done in switzerland when they took two halves of an electron and placed it 14 miles away and they used an atomic clock to measure the distance and time and they found that to tickle this one this one reacted at the exact same time there were no difference in time in other words you can move that electron across the galaxy Tickle this one, and that one will react. Hmm. So there is no distance. doesn't exist outside of the physical. Yeah. Very interesting. Let's, uh, let's come to the end, Agi. But before we yeah. end this episode, I really do want to talk about uh, your book, Spiritual Science, oh. Consciousness, Thinking, and How to Access the Universal... Consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> Tell well, me about your book. This, this is what it looks like. I um, Spiritual science, higher conscious thinking, and how to access the universal consciousness. I, some, oh, a big part of it actually came out of a, a, um, a uh, incredible experience that I had where the universe was downloaded to me and I, both in concept and detail. And I was sitting in meditation, 
and I started to see flashes of light everywhere around me. And then uh, it started to encompass me all the way around me. There was bright white light and I saw ideas, concepts, inventions and people and in that soup. And I concentrated on some things that I was interested in and it popped out and I could see it, see it moving. And I thought about something else and that thing disappeared and, and the other thing came out. So I had, the universe was explained. And when I came out of that, it was very quick, uh, probably less than 10 seconds and it was all over. But I had the memory, all, all of it. And then I sat there and wondered, what in the world was that? What could I do with this? And uh, the very strong thought came that, uh, write it down. So I sat there and I wrote for about two days. And uh, the note that I got was just a small part of it, but I uh, I got it in here. And I explain the universe. I explain what it is, how we can interact with it, how basically what I do, I teach you how to use your mind in ways you normally would be thinking is impossible. Time travel, I'll show you how to do it. And and astro travel, I, sh I talk about how to do that, pretty simple. It's just that you got to do it. So it's a little bit of effort. And many other things that you've been wondering about is explained in there. Uh, anything from, uh, I show you where you can go and find out about photographic memory and like, you know, the mind development course I mentioned. It is really simple, but there is some effort involved. And that's why a lot of people don't do these things because it take away from their TV time. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> yeah, I know it. You know that weather channel is really important. <laughs> <laughs> is your book available in different languages? No, no, it's only available in English, and you can find it on Amazon. Go to Amazon.com and put my name in there, and it will pop up. And then go and read all the subjects. And uh, you'll find some some subject in there that will relate to you. I talk about um, the creation of mankind. That was uh, 450,000 years ago. There was uh, a ship that came and plashed, splashed down in the Arabian Sea. And that was an Anunnaki ship. And they walked to shore and they built a little compound where they were and guess what they call it a dean mm -hmm. kind of like eden yeah so that's where the bible took it from the bible have plagiarized just about everything you can think of it in old writings and brought it in and accredited it to their god but that doesn't make it bad because there's a lot of good stuff in it but they wasn't necessarily the way they said all of it because uh, in the year 325, Emperor Constantine, he told 223 people, go to Nicaea, create a religion that will unify my empire and do not emerge before you have done so. That was the, the actual words that he's supposed to have said. And they went there, they created a religion from old records and newer records. And they presented to him. There was a good, good stuff. He didn't like it. So he threw out most of it and said, make it this way. And then they did. They didn't want to oppose him. And they uh, they voted if they were going to give this, this guy, you know, as Jesus, give him deity status. Some of them, they said, no, we, we can't do that. We haven't seen him do anything that any other man can do. They would grab them and they brought them to the northern part of the uh, of the uh, Roman Empire and they exiled them. Uh, I think they probably more so did away with them. But uh, there is uh, our history is nothing like we have been led to believe. I think so, too. Yeah. Agi, where else can we find you on the Internet? Oh, I am on, on Facebook and I am broadcast team alpha.com. 
on YouTube and 44 other platforms. You'll find me just about anywhere. Uh, but broadcast team alpha. Yeah. I so I, I, and, and anybody that buys the book have full access to me. We can talk. And we, when you start reading it, if you have questions, just get in touch. I'll, I'll talk with you. I spend 16 hours a day working. I have more energy than anybody I know. So I, I'm all there for people if they have questions. If they start learning about astral travel and things like that, uh, they can also come and um, become part of the mastermind group. And uh, we will teach you how to do these things and hypnosis and uh, the psychic abilities and meditation and uh, how billionaires think. We have classes on those things. So just come and check us. If you want to contact us directly, go the mastermind connection at gmail.com. Send me an email to the mastermind connection at gmail.com and uh, we'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. I will put the email in the description, also all the links. Good. I, I had a lot of fun today and I hope we can meet again. Oh, yeah, you just call and I'll be here. I, I like the saying goes, I have never met a microphone I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs>